Joshua 9. All the kings west of the Jordan River heard about these things. These were the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They lived in the mountains and on the western mountain slopes. They also lived along the whole Mediterranean sea coast. All these kings gathered to fight Joshua and the Israelites. The people of Gibeon heard how Joshua had defeated Jericho and Ai. So they decided to trick the Israelites. They gathered old leather wine bags that were cracked and mended. They put them on the backs of their donkeys. They also put old sacks on their donkeys. The men put old sandals on their feet and wore old clothes. They took some dry, moldy bread. Then they went to Joshua in the camp near Gilgal. The men spoke to Joshua and the men of Israel. They said, we have traveled from a faraway country. Make a peace agreement with us. The men of Israel said to these Hivites, maybe you live near us. How can we make a peace agreement with you? The Hivites said to Joshua, we are your servants. But Joshua asked, who are you? Where do you come from? The men answered, we are your servants. We have come from a far country. We came because we heard of the fame of the Lord your God. We heard about what he has done. We heard about everything he did in Egypt. We heard that he defeated the two kings of the Amorites. They were from the east side of the Jordan River, Sion king of Heshbon and Og king of Bashan, who was king in Ashtaroth. So our elders and our people spoke to us. They said, take food for your journey. Go and meet the Israelites. Tell them, we are your servants. Make a peace agreement with us. Look at our bread. When we left home, it was warm and fresh, but now it's dry and moldy. Look at our leather wine bags. When we left home, they were new and filled with wine. Now they are cracked and old. Look at our clothes and sandals. The long journey has almost destroyed them. The men of Israel tasted the bread, but they did not ask the Lord what to do. So Joshua agreed to make peace with the Gibeonites. He agreed to let them live. The leaders of the Israelites made a promise to keep the agreement. Three days later, the Israelites learned that the Gibeonites lived nearby. So the Israelites went to where they lived. On the third day, the Israelites came to their cities. The cities were Gibeon, Kephra, Beeroth, and kiriath Jerim. But the Israelites did not attack those cities. They had made a promise to them before the Lord, the God of Israel. All the Israelites grumbled against the leaders who had made the agreement. But the leaders answered, We have given our promise before the Lord, the God of Israel. We cannot attack them now. This is what we must do. We must let them live. We cannot hurt them, or God's anger will be against us. We would be breaking the promise we made to them. So let them live, but they will cut wood and carry water for our people. So the leaders kept their promise of peace to them. Joshua called for the Gibeonites. He said, why did you lie to us? Your land was near our camp, but you told us you were from a far country. Now you will be placed under a curse. You will be our slaves. You will have to cut wood and carry water for the people of the house of God. The Gibeonites answered Joshua, we lied to you because we were afraid you would kill us. We heard that God commanded his servant Moses to give you all of this land, and God told you to kill all the people who lived in the land. That is why we did this. Now you can decide what to do with us. You can do anything to us that you think is right. So Joshua saved their lives. He did not allow the Israelites to kill them. But Joshua made the Gibeonites slaves to the Israelites. They cut wood and carried water for the Israelites. And they did it for the altar of the Lord, wherever he chose it to be. They are still doing this today. Psalm 140. For the director of music, a song of David. Lord, rescue me from evil people. Save me from cruel men. They make evil plans. They always start fights. They make their tongues sharp as a snake's. Their words are like snake poison. Lord, Guard me from the power of wicked people. Save me from cruel men who plan to trip me up. Proud men have hidden a trap for me. 
They have spread out a net beside the road. They have set traps for me. I said to the Lord, You are my God. Lord, listen to my prayer for help. Lord God, my mighty Savior, you protect me in battle. Lord, do not give the wicked what they want. Don't let their plan succeed, or they will become proud. Those around me have planned trouble. Now let it come to them. Let burning coals fall on them. Throw them into the fire, or into the pits from which they cannot escape. Don't let liars settle in the land. Let evil quickly Hunt down cruel men. I know the Lord will get justice for the poor. He will defend the needy in court. Good people will praise his name. Honest people will live in his presence. Psalm 141, a song of David. Lord, I call to you. Come quickly. Listen to me when I call to you. Let my prayer be like incense placed before you. Let my praise be like the evening sacrifice. Lord, help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say. Don't let me want to do evil or join others in doing wrong. Don't let me eat with those who do evil. If a good man punished me, that would be kind. If he corrected me, that would be like having perfumed oil on my head. I shouldn't refuse it. But I pray against those who do evil. Let their leaders be thrown down the cliffs. Then people will know that I have spoken the truth. The ground is ploughed and broken up. In the same way, our bones have been scattered at the grave. Lord God, I look to you for help. I trust in you. Don't let me die. Protect me from the traps they set for me and from the net evil people have spread. Let the wicked fall into their own pits, and let me pass by safely. Jeremiah chapter 3 Now a man might divorce his wife, and she might leave him and marry another man. Should her first husband come back to her again? If he went back to her, the land would become completely unclean. But you have acted like a prostitute with many lovers. And now you want to come back to me, says the Lord. Look up to the bare hilltop, Judah. Is there a place where you have not been a prostitute? You have sat by the road waiting for lovers. You sat there like an Arab in the desert. You made the land unclean. This is because you did evil and were like a prostitute. So the rain has not come. There have not been any spring rains. But your face still looks like the face of a prostitute. You refuse even to be ashamed of what you did. But now you are calling to me. You say, my father, you have been my friend since I was young. Will you always be angry at me? Will your anger last forever? Judah, you say this, but you do as much evil as you can. When King Josiah was ruling Judah, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Jeremiah. You saw what unfaithful Israel did. She was guilty of adultery. She had idols on every hill and under every green tree. I said to myself, Israel will come back to me after she does this evil. But she didn't come back to me. And Israel's wicked sister Judah saw what Israel did. Unfaithful Israel knew that I divorced her because of her adultery. But that didn't make her wicked sister Judah afraid. She also went out and acted like a prostitute, and she didn't care that she was acting like a prostitute. So she made her country unclean. She was guilty of adultery. This was because she worshipped idols made of stone and wood. Israel's wicked sister didn't come back to me with her whole heart. She only pretended to come back to me, says the Lord. The Lord said to me, unfaithful Israel had a better excuse than wicked Judah. Go and speak this message toward the north. Come back, unfaithful people of Israel, says the Lord. I will stop frowning at you. I am full of mercy, says the Lord. I will not be angry with you forever. All you have to do is admit your sin. You turned against the Lord your God. You worshipped the false gods of other nations. 
You worship them under every green tree. You didn't obey me, says the Lord. Come back to me, you unfaithful people, says the Lord. I am your husband. I will take one person from every city, and I will take two people from every family group, and I will bring you to Jerusalem. Then I will give you new rulers. They will be faithful to me. They will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days, there will be many of you in the land, says the Lord. At that time, people will no longer say, I remember the Ark of the Covenant. They won't even think about the Ark of the Covenant anymore. They won't even remember or miss it or make another one. At that time, Jerusalem will be called the throne of the Lord. All nations will come together in Jerusalem to show respect to the Lord. They will not follow their stubborn, evil hearts anymore. In those days, the family of Judah will join the family of Israel. They will come together from a land in the north. They will come to the land I give to their ancestors. I, the Lord, said, how happy I would be to treat you as sons. I would be glad to give you a pleasant land. It's a land more beautiful than that of any other nation. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from me. But like a woman who is unfaithful to her husband, family of Israel, you have been unfaithful to me, says the Lord. You can hear crying on the bare hilltops. The people of Israel are crying and praying for mercy. They have become very evil. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Come back to me, you unfaithful people of Israel. Come back and I will forgive you for being unfaithful. Yes. We will come to you. You are the Lord our God. It was foolish to worship idols on the hills. All the loud noises on the mountains were a lie. Surely the salvation of Israel comes from the Lord our God. Since we were young, shameful gods have eaten up in sacrifice everything our fathers worked for. The shameful gods have taken our father's sheep and cattle. They have taken our father's sons and daughters. Let us lie down in our shame and let our shame cover us like a blanket. We have sinned against the Lord our God. Both we and our fathers have sinned. Since we were children and until now, we have not obeyed the Lord our God. Matthew chapter 17. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John, the brother of James, up on a high mountain. They were all alone there. While they watched, Jesus was changed. His face became bright like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Then two men were there, talking with him. The men were Moses and Elijah. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you want, I will put three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was talking, a bright bright cloud covered them. A voice came from the cloud. The voice said, this is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. Obey him. The followers with Jesus heard the voice. They were so frightened that they fell to the ground. But Jesus went to them and touched them. He said, stand up. Don't be afraid. When the followers looked up, they saw Jesus was now alone. When Jesus and the followers were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone about the things you saw on the mountain. Wait until the Son of Man has been raised from death. Then you may tell. The followers asked Jesus, Why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first, before the Christ comes? Jesus answered, They are right to say that Elijah is coming, and it is true that Elijah will make everything the way it should be. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. People did not know who he was. They did to him everything they wanted to do. It will be the same with the Son of Man. Those same people will make the Son of Man suffer. Then the followers understood that Jesus was talking about John the Baptist. Jesus and his followers went back to the crowd. A man came to Jesus and bowed before him. The man said, Lord, please help my son. He has epilepsy and is suffering very much. 
He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your followers, but they could not cure him. Jesus answered, You people have no faith. Your lives are all wrong. How long must I stay with you? How long must I continue to be patient with you? Bring the boy here. Jesus gave a strong command to the demon inside the boy. Then the demon came out and the boy was healed. The followers came to Jesus when he was alone. They said, why couldn't we force the demon out? Jesus answered, you are not able to drive out the demon because your faith is too small. I tell you the truth. If your faith is as big as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and the mountain will move. All things will be possible for you. That kind of spirit comes out only if you use prayer and give up eating. Later, the followers met together in Galilee. Jesus said to them, The Son of Man will be given into the control of some men. They will kill him, but on the third day he will be raised from death. And the followers were filled with sadness. Jesus and his followers went to Capernaum. There some men came to Peter. They were the men who collect the temple tax. They asked, does your teacher pay the temple tax? Peter answered, yes, Jesus pays the tax. Peter went to the house where Jesus was. Before Peter could speak, Jesus said to him, the kings on the earth collect different kinds of taxes, but who are the people who pay the taxes? Are they the king's children? Or do others pay the taxes? What do you think? Peter answered, other people pay the taxes. Jesus said to Peter, then the children of the king don't have to pay taxes, but we don't want to make these tax collectors angry. So go to the lake and fish. After you catch the first fish, open its mouth. Inside its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that coin and give it to the tax collectors. That will pay the tax for you and me.